Right, hi. Um, this little book, remember this little book? Well, the reason I've got that out, just give me a sec, sorry, I should have done that before. Um, I found these pictures, I was sorting a cupboard out yesterday, and I found these doodles, and I'm so happy they're preserved and they didn't get creased or wrecked. Did these about seven years ago, and in a minute I'll tell you how I know how long ago I did them. Um, so, they would live beautifully in this little book, but they're too big and I don't want to fold them or scrunch them. I'm probably going to just, I don't know, put them on some cards somewhere to keep them safe. But they're very, very small. If I get that book, it's not that much bigger than the book, is it? Um, that one's maybe a bit longer. So, I was going to do something similar in here. Just try and do a small one on camera, although knowing me, I'll make a mess of it. But we'll come to that in a minute. Now, somebody said, I know how long ago I did them, because these are ones you've probably seen before that I did around the same time. And what happened was I worked in a school, I was teaching in a school for 11 to 16 year olds. And occasionally I would, all of us would take turns to sit in in the unit where the children went who were very disruptive in class. So they were isolated from the rest of the school. And you'd have one child in a room on its own, working on its own with supervision and that would be me. So obviously they're in there, most of them are in trouble and they keep their heads down and get on with the work and they're very quiet, they don't need any help. So I used to just sit doodle and this is what I used to do in there. So that's how I know how long ago I did them. Um, so, but then somebody said in a comment, I put these on Instagram and somebody said in a comment, wouldn't they be beautiful stitched? Well, I wanted to say that I have done something similar. You've probably seen this before. These hang on the wall in my lounge. Um, these are very long, these are human size, I think they're about 5 foot 10, they're the same size as my children were when I made them. And my daughter was probably about 5 foot 10 then, it'll be like a 5 8 one that's for my son. Um, and they hang on the wall in my lounge and I did these as part of my foundation degree. And what they are, they are similar if you look at them. So I was obviously still being informed, wasn't I? by this body of work, which was before I did my proper degree. This is the pre-degree that we had to do. Um, so I have kind of stitched them already, and they probably, they were in my mind probably when I was doing that. So, but these are calico that was dyed black and then dipped in discharge paste and pasted with discharge paste and then bleached and just really allowed to evolve as it was. There was no patterning, no, no set plan of design for this. So then as they get further up, what it's saying, if you look at the top, how heavily bound the top is, you protect your kids, don't you? You put layers around, or anybody that you love, not just your kids. You put layers around them to keep them safe barriers. And this is these barriers. But as your children get older, those barriers diminish because they go out in the world, don't they? And so you get to the very end when they leave home and there's very little you can do to protect your children. So on top of that is scrim that are dyed black. Okay, and within these layers is paper that's rolled up and tied um, with thread. And on each piece of little paper here, it says you are my sunshine. So these are my metaphors yet again. It's all I ever do really. It's all I ever try and achieve is to demonstrate to the world how much I love my children. I don't love my children any more than you love your children. I know that. But this is how I like to express that. So that's, and that's the back with the ties where the papers are tied and there's two little rings on the back which I don't actually use for hanging. All I do to hang them is get a straight dressmaker's pin, put it through there and then through into the wallpaper. That's how they hang because they're not very heavy. So just to go back to this, I do think that this probably played a part in this even if it's not directly taken from this. The information in this and the process I went through for this and my thoughts at the time of making this will all have involved this, will have been influenced by this kind of thing. So if I put that away now, <coughs> I've still got a glass and cough and cold and I don't feel ill at all, I'm just like bummed up. So let me see if I think I could possibly even start something in here that mirrors this. Um, my instinct is to want to go across the page. So basically all this is, it's like hanging cloth, okay, um, over a pole. So I just need to start with that hanging impression, like that, like that's the pole coming out there. If I make that pole darker, I do hope you can see, I'm going to check if you can see that. And if not, I'm going to pull in, no you can I think. 
So, and then what I did was like just different scraps of cloth that may have had different surfaces. So let's say this first one goes to there and it'd be uneven because the torn and ripped and worn through time. That one may have just had nothing apart from a few fragile stitches holding it in place, simply like that. And then at the other side there, it would go up like that. So that's it hanging over there. And those stitches would be visible there wouldn't they, on the reverse, um, so that would be that piece finished, so then I might find another piece to add to this, again with a torn edge, so it's very uneven, very non-uniform, and that may just be a very open weave, so just this is me trying to mimic open weave, um, very fine lines, irregular lines, and then again the other way just to give a sense of that weave even if it doesn't look like a perfect woven it's just giving a sense of that weave and then perhaps I'm not copying this I'm just like using it as a reference but I may well transfer some of the pattern like obviously dots are simple like they I'm a big fan of dots because it's the only thing I can do well um, and even then I'm up that up sometimes so then I might have another bit coming down there that I'd add that would come down onto this page here and I won't give it a pointed edge because that's too predictable but that would go up there and that would have dots okay a dotty surface like that and I'm conscious of not letting this video go on too long um, and I know I said today you were going to see the things that I've been doing in class but I just had to do this because I found that so my, my thought process has changed and you'll get to see the thing I've done for class tomorrow um, so so we've got dotty cloth going on there so then down here there might well be a straggle of something coming down like that to create a point from behind there if I define that edge a bit more and that may well be like a, an old piece of ticking or something with stripes going across. So, that, so that's just the beginning. So I'm, I'm on seven minutes now, so I may well come back in the next week or so and finish this with you. Um, because if I get on a roll with this, I won't want to stop and I've got video to make for class. So, but I just wanted to share those with you because they've only been on Instagram. I'll tell you the story about how and when I did them and also I'll tell you the story about what most likely had an influence in them being created okay I hope you enjoy I absolutely love that actually and if I didn't have a video to make for class now I'd just be doing this all day um, so I hope you enjoyed that uh, and tomorrow you'll get the piece I was talking about that's coming out of class okay